Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing. I had just put out a video, um, and I don't know when you're watched or how I'm gonna put this out, but I just put out a video about a day or so ago, but it could be longer depending on when you're watching about how to correct a port mismatch um, and the situation with that. Pretty much showing you how I port match if there's an if the things aren't lining up right. Well, this one's actually different. This is the ex perfect way to do it, the exact way when things are actually right. So let me start off the situation. So in other words, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna port match the intake and I'm gonna show you exactly how I do it and this is the way that works great. And, and this one I don't have to do the prob don't have the problems it was with the other video. And you'll kind of see as I'm talking. So anyway, here's what I have. This is a uh, 9-8 deck um, block that um, someone had given to me that it hadn't been machined, so it was exactly 9-8 on the deck. And the reason why they gave it to me is this. Bam, that's a hole. In case you're wondering how that happened, um, he was idling the car to put it on the race car trailer and the piston exited. So anyway, it works perfect for what I do. So what I do is I um, have a head gasket in here that's in between here on each one and it's the marine head gasket because this is for a customer that's doing in a um, boat and he should be running about the same head gasket so i'm not worried about it however on the previous video of course there's always some comments like no you gotta use your own block true that's why i'm just showing you this is my mock-up block it works great for pretty much everything i do and i'll show you why some of the variances and stuff won't make that much of a difference so for instance this one i think is an 041 head gasket if I was doing like an 060, what I would do is I have an 060 gasket. So I'll essentially just change out the head gasket because it does play a small part in getting the alignment right. Just letting you know. But for the most part, most people are between like an 039 and 043, which is like, oh my gosh, that's really gonna mess things up. That's about four thousands. A piece of paper is three thousands, so thick. So just to give you an idea, your port mismatch is not gonna be off that much because you used a 39 thousands head gasket to do this versus a 43. Now, if you go say using a 39 and you were using a 55 or a 60, that'd be different, but there's ways around it. Anyway, so I've got it bolted up. I got the head gasket in between and you don't have to put in all your bolts, just enough to snitch down. So I've really got one and I always have a head stud that kind of keeps it holding in anyway. But anyway, so the first thing I do is I'll bolt it on here. And then I'll, then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the gaskets on. Now this head, just for your wondering, is an AFR 315. It's version one. And I'll do a later video about the difference between version one and two as far as flow, because I'm gonna flow these heads um, for the customer because he thought it'd be cool. Um, and I'll, I'll show some of that, but I'll go ahead and tell you just a little bonus nugget of knowledge. These version ones actually outflow the version twos. Don't ask me why. Anyway, uh, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my gasket and I'll put it up here. So next to that. Okay, here's the next step. These are the gaskets that actually fit for this head. Uh, what you'll do is you will tape them on, you'll line them up as best you can, and you'll tape them on. Now, if you're like, wait a minute, it doesn't exactly match. That's okay, I'll show you in a second um, how to get it. But what you really wanna try doing is getting at least two points to touch, the floor and then one of the sides. So for instance, this is almost perfect with the floor, even though the camera doesn't make it look exactly that way. And this side's perfect. The reason why that's important is because um, when you mark it, you'll see in a second, this will be perfect, this one. Then you could just measure from here across if it's less than the gasket. And it is slightly as far as the height. But I'll show you another way to fix that as well. Another tip for you is you'll tape the gaskets on in three places. Notice where I did it. Here, here, and here. And the reason why I don't put them over the ports, obvious, because I want to see. I also don't put them over the head bolt or the intake bolts because your bolt's gonna run through. Um, I typically use green painter's tape. I've tried blue before, it's not strong enough to hold. Don't use duct tape because it'll ruin your gasket. Um, these, you can peel it off. It might take a little bit of this paper wave and nothing to worry about really. And also if it does, this is a spot usually where you're gonna put silicone anyway when you put on the, head, on the gasket itself. Point being is it saves you from buying another set of gaskets. You're gonna do it on both sides. The next thing you're gonna do is drop on the intake. So let's do that. Okay, now the intake's on. Let me show you. This, by the way, is a Wine and Track Warrior intake manifold. It's for a rectangular port, of course, and a 4150 top. This is actually one of my favorite 4150 manifolds for 
a big block Chevy with a lower RPM 4150 style. Really like this one. Anyway, the way you do it is, first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna set it on, and this is a tip for you guys. You're gonna set it on and try, you'll look at your, your bolts. Don't necessarily about get them in the center, but get them in their height. You want this one to be at the same level as this one. Otherwise you have the intake sitting like crooked like this, but it's not a huge deal if you're off because you do tighten down one bolt on each side. And what that'll do is it'll level itself up unless you're way off, but usually it'll get it anyway. Otherwise you can't get the bolt through. So, but before you tighten it down, you check here to make sure you're the same height on each one. Then you take your flashlight and you look down the port and try to get it to line up as best you can, kinda. What you're trying to see is that there's no overhang from one side or the other. Now this one is much better than the last manifold I showed you in the previous video because you don't see a gasket on the floor and you don't see it on the roof, which is great. This means that when I port match it, um, there's room. So I ain't gotta worry about milling off the sides of the manifold. The last video you saw me, I had to cut this to get it to sit lower. This one's not the case. This is a great situation. So looking good. So what do we do next? Well, here's what you do. At least this is what I do. I should have pointed this out at the beginning because commenters seem to always have something to say, which is fine, but this is not the only way to port match. There are several different ways. This is just the one I use. So you'll get a drill and I use an eighth inch drill bit and I'm gonna drill in four spots. One, and I'll, I'll give you some tips on where to put them. This, it has to one, go through the intake manifold, through this gasket, and then leave it into the head. Not like through the head, but into the head. Obviously, you're not gonna wanna do it here. Why? That's where water would be. There is on the head, but not on this manifold because it's at the rear. So what I like to do is I typically do it around the bolt hole. And usually I put them at an angle. And the reason for the angle is um, it'll hold the gasket and I'll show you in the end. So I'll drill like here. Here's a corner. Up front. I'll do it there, and then on this side, it'll be there about, and there about. And just some, just some helpful hints for you. What you'll feel is it'll be kind of hard going at first, and then once you'll know when you go through the gasket because it'll, you'll be drilling, drilling, then it'll skip, like it'll make a, pretty good movement and you'll know you've gone through the gasket. At that point, you don't really want to keep just mowing in because you're into the head. You just want to leave a little bit. So whenever you put the intake back on, if you were to assemble this, um, say for instance, you got it back, you're all done port matching and you're in your final assembly, you get ready to put the head the intake on. The drill bits will actually line it up better than your vision will. So what I mean by that is you'll set it on, you'll take a drill bit to go through your hole, which I'll show you in a second and you'll put it through there, but it'll also line up with the head. So if you do it in all four corners, of course, when you set the intake on, as soon as the drill bits line up on each of those, it's exactly the way it was when you port matched. So there's that. Here's a couple other things that might help you. If by chance you get a little too crazy and you're like, Woo! and you go all the way through the head, it's not the end of the world. What you can do is you can actually use epoxy in that. Like epoxy, I thought you don't use epoxy. Well, I try not to ever drill through, but if I did, you just put epoxy through the back. Only in the, You're just trying to prevent stuff from getting in there. And then instead of using this gasket, you use a full gasket and the hole's covered off. That rarely happens, but if you ever do, don't feel like it's in the world. Next tip, this gasket's a full gasket. As in it goes from the floor, all the way here, all the way up. Awesome, because no matter where you're drilling through the manifold, you're going through the gasket. However, some gaskets, will be below the manifold line. So they might, you might not even see it here, but it'll be way down here. So what you can accidentally do is drill through the manifold and not even touch the gasket. Remember, we're trying to drill through this because that gasket's gonna act as my template. So be sure that when you're drilling the manifold, you're also going through the gasket. This one's not a problem. I'm just saying, cause some felt pros, they'll come down way down like this and you'll be drilling right, you know, in a normal spot and there's no gasket there. So just be aware of that. Um, like I said, I try to keep them around the bolt, not too close to the bolt hole, because when you're assembling it, obviously there's a bolt here. So if you put 
a drill bit right through here and you put your bolt and washer on, you just covered up your hole that you could use to line it up. And by the way, you don't have to use the, line, the bolt, the drill bits to align the intake on the head when you go to do final assembly. It just makes things easier. So here's what it looks like when it's done though, because I've done, remember, this is for a guy that's got two engines in there, so it's identical, but I've got one done. This. So you'll do your, just to show you where I'm at. As you can tell, there's your drill bits, holes. Now that they're here, first you'll do your layout fluid. And then there's this. Let me grab the gasket. See, this is the driver's side. And by the way, you need to mark them. And I'll, I'll tell you this. After you drill through, take off the head and manifold. You want to write on the gasket what side it came from. So this is driver, and the reason I put one is because he's got two engines. So there's going to be a driver, too, for a second engine. So anyway, um, you'll want to mark those. Same with the head. You'll also mark on the head driver, passenger. It just makes things easier. You can put left or right, but that's uh, where are you from the front or back. You know what I mean? So anyway, take your gasket. You're going to be like, what do you do with it? Well, here's what I do. I just had them. I take my eighth-inch drill bit, a different one, and I put tape around one end. And then what you do is you line it up, which is hard to do while holding the camera. So bear with me, there's that one. And the reason why the tape is because otherwise the drill bit can fall through and it can get annoying. So you just use this other one. Let's see if I can get the line back up where it should be. There we go. Boom. And then it's held in place. Now your template is exactly where it was. And the reason why they're at an angle, like I said, like this one looks straightish, but it's not, it's slightly angled. This one for sure is angled more. It's because having them like that, it better locates the gasket on the head. So at this point, you'll scribe your lines. Now here's your pro tip. I say pro, just a tip. The floor, wherever you have that, if that's where you marked, well then, you know on your gasket, you should have made a mark as well. And you'll know, hey, there's that. And let's say this was the one that was touching the wall. You make a mark there, and then you can measure across and do all the other marks. That's easy. However, this is another way for when the gasket's short. Because you remember on the head, the head was actually um, shorter than this gasket, which is fine. Here's a tip for you. If you're wanting to describe the exact line, you go right against the gasket and drag across. The point's got a small angle at it, so if you're, you put the point right in the corner, if you want it to be further away, say 30 thousandths, instead you hold the, you hold this straight up and down. I'm just having a hard time focusing. So in other words, it moves the line out. See how the pick is against the gasket? So it's not in it, it's out. And then you'll have your measurement and you just fall it down. This will give you a step, which, uh, so it's not exactly matched to this to the head, it's a little bit smaller, and you do want a small step to help with the reversion. So what you'll do is you just hold it differently. So instead of scribing it right against it, you just hold it out a little bit, and then just go across. And you'll have your mark that's smaller anyway, and that's it. Then what you'll do is you'll just port match it, and you'll be good to go. Um, this is a couple things to remember though, is um, make sure you mark the gasket itself before you pull it off which side it came from and mark the head which one it came from so like when people send me manifolds and heads that have to be ported like this guy's on his head i will write um, driver or passenger so that he puts it on there is it the end if he accidentally switches it and makes a mistake no uh, because those holes are pretty close from side to side and it should be the same i just prefer to have it this way because i know it's exactly the way it was whenever it got mocked up so hopefully that helps. Anyway, that's the proper way to do it. If you have a question or anything else, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll try my best to answer it. One more thing I probably should have pointed out is um, about the assembly part when you get ready to assemble it. So for instance, this is my sister's motor. Someday I'll have time to dyno it. Um, I don't know when, I'm just busy. But I'm showing you because these holes are in it too. See, that's this hole for this drill bit. It was a line up to this head. If you notice, the gasket goes underneath, but I know it's fine there. So the, what you do when you put it on is you'll put your intake manifold on. I need to show you this better first. So I'm going to pretend that none of these bolts are in. 
I'm putting on the intake manifold for the first time. You'll set it on and, and you're eyeballing it to get it as close as you can to where it lines up with the port, of course. You're trying to eyeball it to make sure it gets there. But if you want to know exactly, you'll take your drill bit and you'll put it through the hole. And because it's got a taper in, like all drill bits do, it should align with that hole. If it's not, then it's off a little. And you'll take a little hammer and just give it a little tap, tap, tap. And usually it slides it right in. You'll do that on, on the corners, on all four. You'll do this before the bolt holes go, bolts go in. So you'll do it on all four. You have it through here. Into there. Just like that on all four corners. Then what you'll do is you'll take your intake manifold bolts. And you'll put those on finger tight. As soon as you got all of them on finger tight, pull these out. Then tighten your intake manifold bolts. Otherwise, what happens is it puts the uh, drill bit at a bind because it will clamp down and it gets like it's super tight and you can't get them out. So there's your tip for that. And that's it. Then the intake, I know, it's like it's really important on like these dual planes because you can't look down a dual plane and see the runner entry to see if you got it right. So having it like this lines up, bam, in there. I know I got it. So it's just a helpful tip for you just make sure you pull that before you tighten your bolts down otherwise you ain't get it out um at least not easily so anyway that should wrap up that one day this will get dynoed all right take care guys hey guys thought i'd make a quick video to remind you that i am not perfect at porting and i do make mistakes sometimes i dick up ahead this happens to be my home though um it was about one o'clock last night, and I figured I'm going to work on my own stuff. Worked on it for about an hour. Probably should have gone to bed. Anyway, the bird grabbed, and phew. And that's definitely in the gasket area, and that's a gnarly deal. So, uh, how deep do you think it is? So, yeah, um, we're going to find out. It takes away some of my work, but it is what it is. At least it was on my own head, not customer said. But not that it matters. This thing will be okay anyway. But I wonder how deep do you think it's going to have to be to get that cut out. So you can take a guess in the comments. And then if you want to, and pause at the end. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give her a little um, cut and see what it does. The answer is 13 thousandths. It's gone. The disadvantage is a lot of the uh, CNC softening is gone, except for this side. Now granted this engine's only gonna be like a 800 horsepower, you know, torque storm deal, so no big deal. And that is what it is. 